Hey, Trevor Matthews coming to you again from the Refrigeration Training Center here in Brantford, Canada. Today I want to talk about CO2 cylinders. A few things that I've learned about them and a few things that you um, need to know. So first, there's two different types of cylinders if you're dealing with cylinders. You're going to have a liquid cylinder and you're going to have a vapor cylinder. And it's very important to understand the difference. So this one here is the liquid cylinder. It has an S. It's a siphon on it. And really what it means, there's a dip tube down in there that siphons the liquid out. So this is the liquid cylinder. It could be painted on there. It could have a, a tag on there that says liquid and show the dip tube. The vapor one will not have that dip tube or will not have siphon on that. So that would mean it's the vapor one. Very important to understand that because CO2 has a very high triple point, which means that at 60, minus 69 Fahrenheit or 61 PSIG, uh, that's when you get dry ice in your system and you do not want that. So what you need to do is add vapor first. How much vapor do you add, Trevor? Well, I hear from different manufacturers, different numbers. It could be 100 PSI, it could be 125 PSIG, could be 145 PSIG or 10 bar. But what you need to make sure that whole system is above the triple point. A couple of things that I learned about when I was charging my system, we have a few different things. I've used this, this is a, vape, a CO2 vapor regulator. So it, it can put in up to 200 PSI into the system. I say the max I've ever got out of it was probably 130 PSI into the system. I've asked lots of contractors of if they ever use one or see one, they never have. So the other one that they use is kind of um, a fitting just like this, a built fitting that they, you would build. I can put the parts in the, in the comments below. But what, we need, what you need, you have a little gasket that you change and then you can put it on the vapor one. Charge it with vapor, and then, then you can charge this one, put this one on the liquid safely, safety gloves, glasses. So make sure you do it safely. And right now, what you really wanna know is like, in here it's 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So I got a pressure temperature chart here, 955 PSI. So that's what's inside these cylinders right now. So just say I do charge the system and I get 100 PSI or 125 PSI in the system of vapor. So I know there's no chance of me causing are causing dry ice in that system. So now I get my liquid and I start charging my liquid and I'm pounding the liquid in there. The faster you put liquid inside your system, the quicker you're dropping the pressure in here. And this happened to me many times trying to load the CO2 trainer up with gas is that it drops the pressure so fast, what happens is right down here, all of a sudden I start seeing a frost line here, wherever it's at with a, a bunch of CO2 still in the system but I can't move the gas because it equalizes the pressure. So just be aware when you're charging CO2, do it slowly. If you have any tips, tricks to help others out, throw it in the comments box.